Uh, Dwarven Family Crest could be cool. I like that one. Um... All right, so Dungeoneer or Explorer's Pack. Let's see the difference between the two of them. Oh, not, not Ollie's homebrew. Uh, Explorer Pack. So Dungeoneer Pack. Backpack, Crowbar, Hammer, uh, Pythons, Torch, Tinderbox, Rations, Water Skin, Rations. That's that's comical. And Water Skin, that's comical. Uh, torches, all all of these right here are comical for me. Don't, don't need them. Just don't need them. I'll keep them. But because I probably just like I probably scared somebody away. Because somebody said it was like, ah! and they dropped their pack and ran, and I was like, oh. I picked it up and walked with it. Explorer's pack, backpack, bedroll, mess kit, um, tinderbox. I mean, this one's even more comical because bedroll, mess kit, tinderbox, torches, rations, water skin, all useful. Oh, useless to me. Sorry. So I'm gonna go with Dungeoneer's pack because that's less useless to me. So Dungeoneer's pack it is with these items. So I'll actually show you how I, I keep track of these things. So coming back over to roll 20. Um, this is my way of doing things because Ollie is keeping track of um, uh, weight, which is something I personally appreciate. Uh, so it's Dungeoneer pack. So that includes a backpack. So let's show, see how this goes. So it's going to be oh, backpack. And then that backpack is going to have inside of it, and I go like this. This is how I shoe inside of it. Um, let's get rid of all the shite. Uh, crowbar, hammer. Um, let's see, 10 torches, which again are amusing. Uh, Tinderbox. Uh, 10 days of rations. Again, amusing, but uh, that can come useful for the party. Uh, think about Sandeep had tons of rations. Uh, water skin. Uh, and uh, 50 feet of, what is this? Hemp rope. Uh, strap to the side of it. I don't need to write that. So, water skin. Uh, I am personally a weirdo that likes to capitalize everything, so I'm just going to take a moment to do that. Um, hammer. Uh, pythons, uh, torches, oh, shite, uh, torches, tinderbox, um, rations, oh, and water skin. It's funny, the, the T almost doesn't look like a T, it looks like an L when you copy and paste it over, like rallians. It's funny that it comes over looking like an L. Uh, pylons, I mean, need to construct additional pylons. Uh, oh, that's fun. Um, the only issue is they don't tell you how much that weighs. So the reason why I do it like this is so I can keep track of everything nice and easy. And uh, I can keep track of all the weights right here. Because I often play characters that have too much weight than they can, more weight than they can carry. So that way I can slide it off my shoulder as a free action. Because dropping an item is a free action. So I slide it off my shoulder as a free action. And then now the weight isn't impeding me in combat. Um, okay. Um... My name was uh, Devalman Greyhammer. Anybody else uh, seconds that? Do we seconds Devalman Greyhammer from Black Magic? Um, the bottle says one sip gets you uh, two. Wait, one sip gets you two makes you forget three. Uh, you may not survive. Eh, I'm not a big fan of that one, Shadow. Um, I'm not a big fan of that one. It is a bottle of Dwarven Whiskey made of uh, cut stone. That is exactly the case. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. What was I on? So I did the equipment. I have seven gold pieces to spend on uh, turning them into other stuff. So, into other equipment. Ah, oh, God. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's making it easier to go up and down. So... Uh, I like the idea of wearing padded armor, but I forget, what happens if you wear armor that you're not proficient with? Let's see, anyone who puts on a suit, uh, those who prefer, uh, however, your class gives you proficiency. If you wear armor that you lack proficiency, you have a disadvantage on any ability check or saving throw. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's rough. Never mind. I was going to say, can I just wear light armor? Is that okay? Your class gives you proficiency. If you wear armor that you lack proficiency with, you have disadvantage on ability check saving throws. Yeah. I'm not going to, um, 
I'm not gonna do, and you can't cast, yeah. I was like, I like the idea of just wearing like padded leather just to make my armor look, but, but nope, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Um, uh, all right, so. Yeah, I know, I know that, Bron. I just like the idea of like the class feature like overtaking it, but that's sadly not how it works. It's not like Mage Armor where it overtakes it. Um, at least that's how I've always run Mage Armor. If you cast Mage Armor, it overtakes whatever one you had prior. So seven gold. Uh, I can have a war pick from mining. Um, that could be fun. You know? Almost uh good having a war pick instead of my uh axe. Because I wasn't like raised a soldier. So it was almost worth having more pick instead of max, but then I have more gold left over. Um, so I would get five more back, I would still have 12. Uh, hmm. Just have a, a fuck ton more daggers. Uh -huh. Light hammer. Javelin hand axe. I don't know, I might end up having to keep the money just because I have nothing to spend it on. Damn it! I think I have to keep the money just because I have nothing to spend it on. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna have to keep the money. I have nothing else I can really spend it on there. I can get other equipment with it, sure, but nothing exciting. So. Scroll uh, items. Sorry, I'm just looking at items that might be worth picking up really quickly. A flask or tankard. That'd be funny. Hammer, sledgehammer, healer's kit. Holy symbol, hourglass. Um, I'm not seeing anything else worth grabbing. I am not. Okay. So I'm just going to add that money to my pocket. Yay, 12 gold. How exciting. Large tool of your trade. I already have that in there, right? Smith tools? Yeah. Cool. Uh, now I want to make sure I add all the um, the items into it. So smithing tools, uh, how much do smithy tools weigh? Uh, that might be over here. Does it say tools? The details for those somewhere? Right here, how much do they weigh? Smith tools weighs eight pounds, worth 20 gold. Uh, smith tools, eight pounds. I'm probably gonna put that in my backpack. We'll worry about that in a second. Commerce clothes, traveler's clothes, belt pouch is one. I think daggers weigh one each, so two. Uh, beardy beard, this is going to be an asterisk. Um, commoners clothes and two travelers clothes. And then start with the other stuff. Commoners clothes weigh, this is the most exciting part of the game. Uh, commoners clothes three, travelers clothes four. I'm getting inundated with goddamn clothing. Ollie. I'm just going to set an outfit of clothes on fire. Uh, that's seven. Uh, where's my backpack? It's five. That's why the... the they give you some cool stuff to start with, but oh man, they inundate you with weight if you actually use the weight rules, which again, I prefer using. But I'm just like, no fighter can handle the weight of their level one character. All right, crowbar, hammer, 10 pythons, 10 torches, tinderbox. Crowbar. Where are you? Crowbar, five. Uh, tinderbox, one. Pythons. Uh, Pythons, Pythons, a fourth each. So it's five, one, a fourth each, and uh, rations. How, how much each? Fucking two pounds each? Fuck you. All right, so that's going to be um, 20. This is going to be 2.5. Uh, this is going to be um, five. Tinderbox, oop, Tinderbox is going to be one. Water skin, I think, is four. Torches is how much? Water skin is no nope, water skin's one. No, nope, yep, it's five. Five. It's more than I used to think it was. Uh, five. I think it was ten torches. Is another ten pounds. Christ. Um, ten torches. Uh, water skin. Five pounds and a hammer. Hammer. Hammer is three more pounds. 
here we are. So that gives me uh, eight, 10 and a half, 20 and a half, 21 and a half, 41 and a half. Uh, 41 and a half is 46 and a half, and I forgot my rope. 10, 56 and a half pounds, just in my goddamn backpack. That's 56 and a half is what it says right here. 56.5, uh, we actually gonna add the Smith tools in there. So I'll just throw this in here, then it's not quite in alphabetical order yet, but that's okay. These weigh eight. 56 and a half becomes what? 64 and a half? 64.5, which is why I put them all in my backpack so I can just goddamn throw them away if I need to. Uh, traveler's clothes, I'm honestly, commoner's clothes are worth what? What are they worth? Commoner's clothes, five silver pieces, get rid of my damn commoner's clothes. Okay, I have traveler's clothes. Commoner's clothes, you're gone. Grab my five silver, I need it. I'm, I'm not even gonna keep five silver, I need one electrum piece, that's right, one electrum instead. Uh, you have to drop your backpack before fights. It's just the way it goes. You need you need to do that. Um, but that's cool. Um, and hand crossbow, it is a one-handed item. You can't beat the fact that it's a one-handed item. You know what I mean? Um, unlock you so I can delete you and delete you. Cool. Lock you back up. Awesome. I'm loving it. Uh, belt pouch, uh, belt pouch just has gold inside of it. Uh, my, I'm gonna keep my beardy bottle inside of my belt pouch too. Uh, what was my character's name? Did uh, we decide what the name was going to be? Um, yes. Um, they, you just automatically walk into the game encumbered for every single solitary character. And that's, uh, and the encumbrance rule is not an optional rule. Let's actually go over to that right now. Uh, it is not an entirely optional rule. If you go to character optimizations uh, and you look right over by where it talks about strength. Um, here we go, zoom in right here for you. So there's a variance rule that goes, uh, normal is five times. So you can, uh, if you carry weight excess of five times your strength score, you are encumbered, which means your speed drops by 10. If you carry ex uh, excess of 10, that um, means you're heavily encumbered, which is speed spot drops by 20. And I don't think you can carry any more than that, really. Um, but even with the less complicated rules, even without the encumbrance rules, carrying capacity is still 15 times your strength score. That's still the capacity. So that being said, if uh, 14 times 15, honestly, I cannot do that off the top of my head. 14 uh, times 15, go Google, is 210 pounds. That's still a considerable weight. Consider most people don't have 14 strength. If you're playing a wizard, like an actual wizard character, you're gonna have, um, I don't know, an eight strength, a 10 strength. So you can carry what? Um, 150 or 120 pounds. You easily build up, look at this, just one goddamn backpack and a build up. I'm not even wearing armor. I designed the character without armor. If you're playing a, a fighter and you got like six weapons, a shield, uh, uh, what do they use, chain mail, and so on, you're instantly inundated with weight. So speaking of, let me actually write down my weight score since we're doing this version of the game. It's actually important to me to write down weight. Why are you not allowing me to scroll it down? Why aren't you allowing me to see the things I want to see? Why are you doing this to me? I don't understand. Why, why, are, you, why are you doing this to me? I can't extend my... Uh, what is my screen not big enough? Is 1080p not big enough to, to make you happy? I don't want to pop you out to do that. That's annoying. I guess I'm going to have to put you over here for my weights. Um, for now, let's do uh, encumbrance uh, is, what did it say? It was 210. And then after that was, I honestly don't remember what it said for the multipliers after that. Um, let me say five times. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Five times, five times 14 is 40, 60 pounds. Um, so this is uh, 60 pounds. Uh, then we're gonna go um, heavy encumbrance is going to be uh, 10 times, which is 100 and, I guess, no, 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 five times, yeah. Five times 14 is not, am I crazy right now? Five times 10 is 50, five times four is 20, 70 pounds. I was like, why does this math not add up? 70 pounds. 
and that makes 140 pounds. And then pretty much that's where it goes, is anything above that. All right, moving on. Um, so encumbered, 71. Obviously I'm encumbered, I was encumbered a while ago. Uh, this also has to include my shield, but my name was, this was my old name, so we're gonna copy and put it into bio. Bam. Is uh, Devalman Greyhammer. So I'm gonna put Devalman Bottle. Uh, let's get rid of Greyhammer. Devalman Bottle is going to be the name of it, and it is going to be inside my belt pouch. Uh, and it weighs asterisk, so it doesn't matter. Uh, go back down here. We're going to um, delete you. And then we gotta get a shield up in here. I don't know why I just did that because I wasn't making it the right item. Um, shield. Shield weighs how much? Uh, I also have a battle axe. Uh, which weighs how much? Uh, equipment, where are you? She got to the correct page before I did that. Doing. There we go. Uh, battle. Oh, uh, sorry. The battle axe weighs four pounds, and shield weighs. Why are you being weird? You're being so weird on me. There we go. Uh, shield weighs six, so another uh, ten pounds thrown on. So shield weighs six. Battle axe weighs four. Uh, Eighty-one pounds so far. Damn. Um. Hmm. Uh. You worn clothes do not count uh, towards encumbrance? Where does it say that? Um, does it actually say that somewhere? Uh, yes, my focus is that bottle, but that bottle can be inside my belt pouch. And much like Paul Bundy, I just reach my hand into my pouch and, uh, and cast my spell. I don't have to be waving it around in the sky or anything. I just have to have it on hand. Um, okay. I think that's all of my equipment. I think this is all my class features. Uh, so my AC is technically a 10. Uh, and then when I cast this ability right here, my AC becomes Ollie. Are you ready for this? That's my AC when I use my unlimited feature. Um, speed is 25. Ah. Uh, Am I, did I say Paul Bundy? Al Bundy? Paul Bundy? Oh, uh, Paul Bundy, I think it was the murderer. Al Bundy. Whoops. Um. Um. I hope Dean makes a bard. Because I'm a dwarf, I'm going to be lawful neutral. Uh. Oh, I just realized what Ollie, Ollie just popped into the game for two seconds, wrote Scott sucks and disappeared. Thanks, Ollie. Thanks, buddy. I just noticed you did that. You're funny. Um, out whatever the Bundys are. <laughs> you know what I mean. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Go together like a horse and carriage. This. Um, so. Uh, brewers, kits, masons, tools, and smith tools. Ollie, what attribute are those using? Are they going to be using the attribute of intelligence or something else? Um, and what am I going to do? I I can I can get the spell shield. Uh, intelligence scores for all of them. That's fine. I make them usually intelligence, but changes based off of the uh, the the moment. Sometimes it makes sense to be something else. Like, you're like, can I move this stone? And you're like, well, you can make a strength check, or you can make a mason's, to uh, mason's uh, with strength as the backbone. And the reason why I do it like that is because as a mason, you are better trained at like picking up and moving stones than a random schmuck picking up and moving a stone. So that's why I like, and eh, the moments your tools can help you. Because it's not necessarily just tools, it's also training in a profession, right? Because they got rid of the, the actual profession skill. Um... Uh, all right, let's see. What else do I have left to do? I have to come up with my actual name, choose my spells, and then my personality traits and all that shit. 
Uh, bonds. Um, I cannot remember who I was or what my life was like. I wish to know if I made my family proud in my last moments. Bam. So, uh, I cannot remember who I was or what my life was like. I wish to know if I made my family proud in my last moments. Fun, fun, fun. Well, AC is not going to be a uh, 22, though. It's going to be a 20. And maybe if I grab that spell, 25 at times, but I probably won't do that. Um, personality traits. Uh, one of my traits. Um, I'm not going to get that for that. I'm going to drop from me being in the, uh, undead. I awoke. I awoke to find... Myself in the land of the living, mm, but not amongst them. Maybe not one of them, whatever the case may be. Um, I take great shame in what I am, what I've become. God, I hate this keyboard. I cannot type on this keyboard. I don't get me wrong. I. Um, uh, but not in mean, the land of the living, but not with them, not with them, not among them. I am technically among them, not with them. Um, um, mm, but not one of them. I wanted to say something a little bit fancier, but I guess I can't, can't think of one. So I woke to find myself in the land of the living, but not one of them. I take great shame in what I've become. So that's a personality trait. Um, and then other personality trait. There's... I don't know. What's my other personality trait? Uh, oh! Um, I feel a uh, calling for battle. Ah! One... Deep in my bones. I cannot explain it. But I find it difficult to resist the sound of battle. All right. Uh, I feel a calling of battle. I feel a calling for battle. Uh, one deep in my bones. I cannot explain it, but I find it difficult to resist the sounds of combat. Sounds of war? Let's say war. Hmm. Uh, ideals. What is my ideal with this guy? And what's my flaw? And my flaw should just simply be I'm undead. Which means. Uh, I mean, I'm undead. That's my flaw. Like, it's, it's an intrinsic flaw to the game. Ollie is telling me that everybody fucking hates my race and a lot of places won't even serve me for who or what I am. So that being said, uh, if you get bonuses for roleplaying your character, my character is uh, undead, I will roleplay that all the time. And, um... Uh, you know, I am undead, but like living. But like the living. But enjoy the company of the living. There you go. So now if I roleplay that, technically speaking, he's supposed to award me with uh, inspiration. Because uh, I'm putting myself in the party uh, in needless difficulties because I'm trying to play my flaw. Uh, uh, if you're new to the stream, uh, Ollie has some homebrew. And part of this homebrew is an undead uh, race. It's called Undead. Uh, clo the colloquial, I have a hard time with that word, colloquial, colloquial term for it is deadless. I'm a deadless soldier. So I'm an undead dwarf. Back to where I was. Um, 
experience points um, more than your body has room for. Oops. Stop shitting with the typing. Uh, ideals. What are my ideals? What are my ideals? Hmm. Ideals. Pretty much already kind of explained my ideals by being verbose with my uh, with my other features. Suggestions on my ideals. I am open to suggestions. Feel free to toss them my way. Um, ideals. I guess... Man, this undead character is so cool. Any ideals? I'm going to think on the ideals. Uh, I'm going to need to choose a name of my spells. So let's go over that. And then, I, and then we're going to do the sum up for this character because he's freaking awesome. Um, spells. Uh, a sorcerer gets... Just pulling it here really quickly. Oh, that's wrong. Four cantrips? That seems very wrong. Hello, let's go to the PDF. Oh, wow. Four cantrips? Holy crap. Four cantrips and uh, two first level spells. Okay. Um, let's go over here. I know one of the things I need to do is, I think it's called 5e starter spells. Because there's one there that I, really tickled me. Um, and it's called Infestation. I like the idea of it. For a cantrip, Infestation. Um, because I'm an undead creature. So it's a really nifty one. Infestation, uh, one action, 30 feet, instantaneous. Um, you cause mites, fleas, and other parasites to appear uh, momentarily on one creature you can see within range. The target must succeed in a constitution saving throw or take 1d6 piercing damage. If the target takes any damage, the target moves 5 feet in a random direction. Roll d8 to choose a direction. Um, the spell's damage increases by 1d6 when you reach blah 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 blah. Okay. Let's choose spells. Okay. Is the hyperlink to the spell list or no? It does not. So let's go 5e sorcerer spells. I mean, you know one spell that I have to grab because I'm pretty sure it's on my list. Um, one spell that I, I, I'm going to have to grab is uh, Green Flame Blade. Going to have to. I'm pretty sure it's on the list. So let's go... Um, uh, 5e, uh, where are you? Uh, green flame blade. That's not telling me if it's on. Oh, yep, sorcerer. It's on the sorcerer list. I have to grab green flame blade. I mean, it's amazing. I use my action to hit somebody and hit somebody else adjacent to them. It's totally worth it. Um. Booming Blade? Ah, uh, why Booming Blade? Booming Blade is so, like, it requires you to be a moving character, you know what I mean? And you already get the effects of Green Flame Blade here, with the exception that it's one's fire and one's what, thundering, I think? I don't know, I'm just not sold on Booming Blade. It really requires a concept type. It's great, maybe, say, after 5th level, or at 5th level, but early on, eh, I'm just not sold on it. Hmm... Yeah, but you get that damage from here. Green Flame Blade. You know what I mean? Um, that's damage that requires a trigger. You know? Alright. Over to spells. Where are you? Here. Alright, I like the idea of avoiding spells that uh, require saving throws because my uh, charisma is only a plus one. So my DCs are only going to be 11. So let's avoid um, uh, spells that have saving throws. So things like burning hands and whatnot are going to be far less useful for me. Um, uh, extra tree, false life could certainly be useful. Uh, it's funny as being an undead. Um, magic missile is useful. Shield is useful. Uh, thunder wave, no, no. Uh, silent image, no. Uh, mage armor, definitely a no. Jump, no. Fog cloud, definitely useful. 
Featherfall, I don't really see us getting into many situations where that could be useful. Um, doesn't color spray, or is that only in the older edition? Doesn't this have a mechanic where it's still, um, but, oh, I'm looking at first level spells. It's funny. I should be looking at cantrips. Um, doesn't color spray have a mechanic where even if they, uh, succeed? Uh, roll d6, blah, 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 starting with, uh, creature hit, so, this is how many go with the spell for Vega, Cohen, blah, 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 starting with the creature's lowest hit, uh, hit points, creature's spell, but, oh, you don't even get a saving throw. Well, Color Spray is fucking useful because you don't even get a saving throw against it. It's just roll 60-10, total number of hit points. Um, spell can affect 15-foot cone. Uh, starting with the creature with the lowest health points, it affects them, blind until the spell ends. Uh, subtract the total before moving, blah, blah, blah. So it just blinds them, which is lame that it doesn't have all the other effects it used to, but it just blinds them. That's why nobody ever uses it. It's because it's, it's lame now. Fog Cloud, certainly useful. I like the idea of the fog cloud being like dust and stuff that comes out of my body. Um, I can't get uh, Wraithful Smite. Um, I cannot, I cannot get it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it does require them to move voluntarily. There are ways around that, but yes, it does. So shield is obviously a beautiful one. Magic missile is obviously a beautiful one. Both easily spammable. False life, uh, I, I can do a short rest and get something better, but this is nice to kind of like buff you between short rests, but uh, nah, it's better for warlocks who automatically increase the spell level for it. Um, Mesa Missile Shield, Fog Cloud, Color Spray. Color Spray is nice, but sadly it, um, let's go back to the stone spell list. I'm pretty sure that's not the one that was an option. I could be mistaken. Oops, back over here. It was compelling duel. Oh, they listed that weird. I'm so sorry. That is written funny. Usually it's first level, bup, bup, bup. second level, bup, bup, bup. third level, bup, bup, bup. there were four written just down. That is written strange. So Wraithful Searing. All right, so I have to look up um, Paladin Spell List 2. I'll get to that in a second. Color Spray, I like that there's no save. I like the fog cloud as well. I like the, the theme of fog cloud. Uh, let's see, we currently have that, that, and that in the party. I don't know about the other one. Um, I can see so many situations where fog cloud can be useful, but it requires concentration, so it already dips me in for concentration one. Hmm. It's utility. I like fog cloud more than color spray. Color spray thematically just bugs me. You know what I mean? It just bugs me. Again, I would just do it as dust instead of colors, but still. Um, magic Missile. Chaos Bolt. No thanks, Ollie. It's too magey. I'm going for less of a mage feel. Um, I mean, I saw it. It's roll a d8. You, uh, it does its random damage. You roll 2d8 to do the damage. You choose one of them that decides the type of damage. If you roll the same die, like a snake eyes or whatever, that it bounces off and does somebody else. It's too magey for me. I'm, I'm trying to go less for that feel. Uh, magic Missile could work. It's kind of like the sheer like rage of undead shooting out, but no. We're going to avoid Magic Missile for now. Shield and Fog Cloud are what's sitting here. Now let's look at those other ones instead of... Oh, and while we're here... Um, chill touch just makes sense. Um, dancing lights, firebolt, I like. Mage hand is hilarious. Uh, mending. Message is super useful. Minor illusion, super useful. Prestidigitation is always useful. Uh, ray of frost. Um, I think I like those ones. Cool. So we'll hold those ones out there for a second. Now let's go back to spellcasting, spell lists, paladin, because that's where those other ones are. Let's look at the first level one. Uh, I thought you said it was taken off the paladin list. I'm not sure here. Why isn't it taken off the paladin list? It's taken off like the paladin smite list. Cla Ooh, shoot. Classes, paladin. Smite. I mean, is it from a list other than the Paladin list? Am I crazy? Why am I not seeing it here? 
Um, hmm. Hmm. Is yours paladin? Remind me, where are you? Here's paladin, dense, uh, blah, 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 fighting style, spell casting, sacred oath, hey, yeah, oaths, uh, all that stuff. Sacred oath, uh, extra spells based off of it. It's actually not written there. Um, uh, let's see if I can do it from a different one. So let's go uh, 5e paladin spells. Let's see if I can get it off of roll 20. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh yeah, that is what I wanted. Yep, also not on roll 20. Huh. Is it in the PHP? Am I crazy? Hmm. Classes. Let's go to equipment, character actualization, uh, game playing, combat, magic, spells. Um, Paladin spell list over here. It is written here, but for some reason it's not written there. That's weird. Maybe because of copyright infringement or something like that. Um... No, no, I know how to control F. I, I know how to do that. I was just seeing if it was on the list. Um, so I specifically wanted this page. That's why. All right, cool. So the, uh, the ones that I can get uh, in accordance to the PDF are... Um, don't need you. Uh, it's Compelling, Searing, Thunderous, and Wrath. So I'm just going to go uh, Smite. Bam, 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 bam. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, banishing no, blinding no, branding no. Searing is one of them. Uh, next time you hit a creature with a melee weapon, uh, it says dur uh, concentration duration up to one minute, one bonus action. Uh, extra does one d six fire damage to the target and causes the target to ignite in flames. Uh, at the start of its uh, each of its turns, must make a Constitution saving throw on a failed save. It takes one d six, so it's automatically one d six, and they potentially continue to take more. On a successful save, the spell ends. Nifty. Next, uh, staggering, uh, thunderous. Uh, when you f the first time you hit with a melee weapon during the dispel's duration, they take an extra two d six thundering damage. Additionally, if, uh, if the target is a creature, if the target is a creature, that's funny. Uh, must succeed a strength saving throw. We push back 10 feet. This one's nifty because it's friggin' just straight up 2d6 damage. So the first time you hit with a melee weapon attack during the spell's duration, your weapon rings with a thunder uh, thunder that's audible within 300 feet of you. It deals an extra 2d6 thunder damage. That's useful. Uh, next. Wrathful. The next time you hit with a melee weapon, um, uh, attack during the soul's duration, the attack deals an extra 1d6 psychic damage. That's useful, it's way less, but it's psychic damage. Additionally, if they, uh, make it, if it's like a wisdom saving throw, it be frightened, uh, until the spell ends. As an action, if the creature, uh, can make a wisdom check, um, nifty? I like it, but sadly, and somebody had just said this, sadly my DCs are gonna be shit. So, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Wrath is good, but Thunderous is better at this level, at this point in time, at this juncture. So, I know it's not going to be a roll 20 because we just looked for it. So let's copy this over here. Uh, go into bio. Paste it. Um, okay. Let's do Thunderous Spite for a first level spell. Thunderous Smite. Um, I feel bad for the Paladin in the party because they've got another Paladin in the party. Um, Thunderous Smite, first level Evo, uh, one bonus action, range self. So, casting time, one bonus action. Uh, this is Evo. Uh, range self. Um, target. So, component verbal. And I'm going to just copy and paste this one. Uh, range self, opponent verbal. Opponent verbal only. 
target. All right, what I'm gonna do is a spell card. And that'll pop out fine. Now the other one, because I'm not doing both those smites. <clears throat> um, yeah, you were saying that before, which is pretty amazing there, Brun. You were saying that before, which is pretty amazing. Um, uh, what is it, Fargonaut? Um, that's up to Ollie. If he can give me cold damage instead of thunderous damage, that way I'm not stepping on the paladin's toes. That would be really fucking sweet. But that is up to Ollie. I have one more spell to choose. Fog Cloud, which is thematically cool, and Shield, which is super fucking powerful. You know, as much as I want to take Shield and pull that bullshit, I am already a sorcerer with a fuck ton of health points and a uh, 20 uh, AC. I'm going to nix Shield for now. I'll probably revisit it at higher levels. For now, we're going to nix that, and we're going to go to Fog Cloud. I should be very... I mean, think about it. To roll 16, you can only do 25% of the time. So a typical goblin, orc, anybody else, almost all of them have a plus four chance to hit. I will only get hit one quarter of the time of being attacked. That is really good. That is a really high AC. So I'm going to be satisfied with my 20. I think I'm going to grab Fog Cloud instead, which I could totally just drag and drop from over here. Um, so Fog Cloud. I don't want to be too OP walking into the game. That's just annoying. For the DM. And it really just makes wrathful DMs anyways, you know what I mean? Um, hmm. Yeah. So, um, Thunder Smite is going to be renamed to, um... Help me rename this to something like Smite from the Grave, or Death from the Grave, or or Touch of the Grave, or or something like that. Help me rename it to that one. And uh, honestly, if it can do necrotic damage, that'd be fucking awesome. It's just my brain is always stuck in 3.5, where necrotic and... Uh, so there's the, what, five elemental damages. Uh, fire, uh, cold, um, shocking. Sorry, electricity, they called it. Uh, sonic and uh, acid. Those are the five elemental types, but then they also had force damage. They also had positive. They also had negative damage. Those were different. In 5e, it's very different. It's very 4.0 feeling. So um, it's up to him. Uh, withering, uh, withering Strike, maybe. Uh, that reminds me of a spell from 3.5. But again, can it be uh, necrotic or does it have to be cold? That's a, a big thing. Um, it is cool, Ollie, because it, it it opens my eyes to new things. All right, closing fog cloud. I need four, and we already know. Sadly, it's not gonna fucking be in here, is it? Green flame blade is not gonna be in here. Yep, nope. So we get a copy and paste green flame blade. Will you let me? Yes, you will. Uh, evocation action five feet VM weapon instantaneous. Uh. Green, oh, sorry, green flame blade. Uh, evocation, uh, action, uh, range five feet. Uh, what did it say? PM, I believe. Um, and it did require a component, it was a uh, weapon. If that was all the details for it. I can macro that later. So, uh, waiting to see if cold or necrotic damage for what I'm going to name that. All right, so green flame bay was an obvious. Uh, what were the other suggestions? Uh, infestation was a really good suggestion, which I have to also copy and paste, which is annoying. Um... Oh, okay. I just can't see it. I have a, a hard time reading everything Ollie. Because he doesn't at Dilric, so it doesn't jump out at me. Um, so we will rename it for Necrotic Damage. Thunder Smite. Bam. Alright, uh, that also makes it a Necromancy spell instead of an Invocation spell, I believe. 
But that's up to Ollie if that's the case. Usually it would be, but that's up to Ollie. Um, I say usually it would be because I, I don't think there are uh, evocation spells that do ne necrotic. I could be wrong. 5e is, again, strange in that regard. Minor Illusion. Uh, I like the idea of Minor Illusion. Super useful. Uh, Prestidigitation. Once again, I like the idea of it. Ray of Frost does cold damage. Big thing is it's 60 feet. Message. I like the idea of like a whisper from the grave. It sends like shiver up and down your back. Um, hmm. Hmm. Image of Grauman. Cute. Firebolt, though, is 120 feet, which is way better. Yeah, I probably have to go Firebolt. Hmm. Firebolt. Throw that on there. Um, it does count as one of the uh, Sorcerer ones for first level, sadly. It does. It says Fog Cloud and Thunderous. That's all it is. I, I like the idea because Green Flame Blade also does fire. I like the idea of fire uh, in there as well. <clears throat> so I have Infestation I'm thinking about that requires a save. Chill Touch, which also does necrotic damage at 120 feet. Um, but if your target, if you hit a target that's undead, they have disadvantage on attacks until the end of your next turn, which is wonderful because people can do this shit on me, unless Ollie says otherwise, because dead lists are different. It also does that shit on me. I like the idea of Chill Touch, though. So why don't we add Chill Touch for now? Whoa. A lot of stuff popped up. Weird, but okay. Bam. Infestation's cool. Mage Hand and... Uh, minor Illusion, Prestidigitation, Ray of Frost. We'll get rid of Message. Uh, Prestidigitation, Ray of Frost. We'll get rid of Frost. I already have two attack ones. Technically speaking, I have three attack ones. Uh, and potentially a fourth one. So I need non-attack ones. Hmm. A plus three is not terrible, Mimitin. Plus three is not awful. I'm fine with a plus three to hit. Hmm. <laughs> Prestigitation or minor illusion? Everybody opinions, prestigitation or minor illusion. Both have so many fucking amazing abilities you can do with them. So many amazing abilities you can do with them. Oh, man. <sighs> Physical interaction with the image reveals... Like, like, can I use uh, Minor Illusion on my face to make me look less dead? As that's Ollie, so it's not quite a disguised self because I'm not disguised in the way I look. I'm using it to, as almost like a... Um, almost like a disguise kit sort of a thing as opposed to... Uh, yeah, I'm using it as like a disguise kit as opposed to trying to change who I am. Cool. Because I'm out of uh, spells, black magic. So minor illusion. Minor illusion. Ah, oh, god damn you. Uh, minor illusion, right here. So now I have to choose, because I have green flame blade, which is melee, and both of these are equally ranged. Do I choose uh, Infestation or get rid of one of these two? Let's look back at Infestation. 30 feet, way closer. It's only 1d6 and they only move 5 feet. So the problem with Infestation is it's really fucking cool thematically. Um... Um, like infestation is really cool thematically. 
Uh, they appear, because it's Conjuration, whether or not they make their save. Like, that's really, really, really useful. Hmm. Burn Chill Touch. I mean, I, I, if I if I choose Infestation, I have to get rid of either Chill Touch, which is 1d8 Necrotic, um, and has an effect on undead creatures, or uh, fi uh, Fire Bolt, which is 1d10 damage, and it sets stuff on fire. I'm leaning towards Fire Bolt because it's more damage, and it's a different type of damage. Um, infestation's really fucking cool. Um... Wait, get Booming Blade, get Infestation. Uh, but the thing is, with that does not work. Because I'm pretty sure Booming Blade, they have to choose to move. With this one, the target moves. So, I, I do not think that that works. Let's look up Booming Blade to confirm. On a hit. If the target willingly moves before then. Doesn't count. It's not willing if a spell forces them to do it, does not work. That 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 is uh in accordance to uh, Ra and probably Rai, that, that does not work. Um hmm. Let's see. Alright, I am going to Yeah, I think I can get rid of Chill Touch and go infestation, because it's fucking cool. Cool. Uh one action, 30 feet, VSM, a living flea, and uh instantaneous. And I saw somebody had said something about, well, I already got fleas in me. Which is really hilarious. Because it's true. It's funny because it's... Oh, fuck that. This is so bad. Ugh. They copy and paste so poorly. Like, that is like the worst copy and paste ever. Ugh, God, it's so bad. Whatever. So bad. Um, it's called Infestation. I know I spelled that wrong. I was like, ah, I'm like slopping my uh, letters all the way. I believe it's Necromancy. I believe it's an action. I believe it's 30 feet. Um, it says Creature. It doesn't say Living or Otherwise. I believe it was uh, VM. VSM, Living Flea. Sorry. A living flea. Uh, duration is instantaneous. I love duration instantaneous. It's the best duration. It's way better than permanent. That's fucking certain. Uh, output attack. Uh, why would I output attack? Because the 1d6 damage? No, I'm just going to make that a macro later on. Spell card. Ooh, spell card. Um, boom. Uh, let's check my spells and make sure they're currently functioning. Uh huh. I got green flame blade, fire bolt, fire bolt. I don't want it like that. I want it as a spell card. And I will add my macros later. Fire bolt. I gotta change that part of it. Uh, cut, feast. Okay. Ah, uh, fire bolt again. Perfect. Uh, infestation, perfect. Uh, not so perfect, actually. Apparently, I have to fix it because it's really broken. Minor illusion. Let's go back to infestation, and it's bad at northeast. Needs to be fixed. The whole thing needs to be fixed, but you know what I'm saying. There we go. Infestation, perfect. Looks a thousand times better. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember Ollie. Um, how do you have fleas on you? Your dead body cannot sustain uh, the maggots. You know what? Um, fleas probably travel. Like, fleas probably survive off the maggots in me, or they use me to transport from location A to B. Listen, fleas can be my clothes. Maybe I intentionally keep fleas in my gallbladder. I just kind of like open up my gallbladder, put them in there, and seal it up. You know what I mean? And besides, um, uh, if I am a rotting corpse, couldn't they eat that? No, I suppose I need living things. Yeah, oh well. Um, fog cloud. Functioning. Thunder smite. Looks horrible. That looks terrible. Attack with the... 
succeed away. So it's oh, oh it actually looks easy to fix. Cool. Uh, give additionally up there. Give a space for necrotic damage. Um, succeed, and lastly, away. Better. Cool. All right. Um, spells are done. Bio. I don't really usually write in there anyways. Um, core. I usually keep that for like notes. Ideals I need to come up with and name I need to come up with. I need a name as my undead character. What is my undead character's name and what is my ideal? Uh, I'm going to go to get ideals from all these written stuff and see if there's any inspirations there. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Whoops. Totally did not mean to do that. Okay. I meant to cut this one. Bring this one over. <laughs> okay. So, I'll show the PDF likes to transfer uh, one. Oh, that's funny. Uh, a joke name? No. Ah, oh, this is a serious character. Um, I don't know with Meta Magic, honestly. I didn't even think that far ahead uh, to third level. I I know that Ollie's kind of a uh, Ollie's world is a dark world. I'm not going to tell you much about the world that I know because that's his place as the DM. It's his world, and I want him to enjoy doing that. But um, his world is a bit darker, so I don't know if my character will live that long. I'm gonna kind of think like one level ahead at a time, so I'll get more into that once I hit level two. Uh, ideals and name. Hmm. Figure out a way of breaking the curse, allowing fair treatment to every uh, cursed one. Uh, also being a pain in the ass, a cursed one instead of undead. Also be a pain in the ass of being a cursed one instead of undead. Ooh, I, I, I kind of like that. Um, ideals. Uh, let's look at what he had written, and then I'll make a decision. Let's go down to... Personality trait ideal. Home, earn as much as I respect. Respect the laws of experience. Adventure is a new step. I'm seeking to you to see the... I suppose, eh? Freedom, being shackled. It's my job was torture. Hilarious. Uh, the world soured me. I'm only, uh... Chivalry? No. Blah. Those all suck. Um... Hmm. Uh, his name Dil Jun. His name is Dil Jun. I'm gonna hold on to that for now. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, please write it in like Merriam-Webster style pronunciation. But let's put this here for now as the first suggestion. Uh, Dial Jun. Diljun, Diljun, something like that. All right, um... Ideals, fuck me. Uh, ideals. I need one ideal. Uh, it's fork, grot, empty stone. Oh, fuck Brunchen. That is beautiful. Uh, I'm curious, where did you get that from? Where did you get that one from? Just kind of seeing if it would just pop up from wherever it came from. Whatever translator site or whatever. I like that though. Hmm. Uh, Dill June. Okay. Um, I honestly, I like the fork, uh, fork grow. It's forack grow, fork grow, forack grow, forack grow. I'm gonna go with that one. Yeah, I'm gonna go forack grow. But now, what is my uh, ideal? Hmm. 
Uh, ideal. Um, I was created uh, with or without purpose. I will uh, discover which and why. Boom. Ideal. I was created with or um, uh, which with an H. So I was created with or uh, without purpose. I will discover which and why. I think that's what I'm going to go with for now. Hmm. Is that everything? Everybody, did I get everything? Am I crushing it here? Because that's the case. I've had to piss for like a half hour now and I really love to go do so. And then, uh, and then play some Borderlands for a bit. So did I do everything? Totally have inspiration walking into the game because I'm amazing and all I said so. It's amazing. Deadless is my race, class, uh, backgrounds, uh, all this stuff, my gold, all of my equipment, my uh, stuff is thrown on there for how much it friggin' weighs, which is way too fucking much. I should probably really write down how much this weighs without that uh, on there. 64 and a half taken off is what? 17.27 um, uh, uh, right? So let's go like this. 17.26 uh, without backpack. So I can keep track of that. Um, hmm. I think I got everything. Yeah. I think, I think I have everything. I think it's all here. Bio. Spells. Yeah, Ollie. Oh, because it was not, because it was a uh, undead sorcerer. Uh, and the character's gonna be kind of dark and creepy and shit like that. And uh, I figured you'd appreciate a dark and creepy character. Um, it's unique, that's why. It is very unique from uh, ones I typically allow in my worlds. Um, not because I'm like, oh, I would never allow undead. It's just most worlds, it's difficult to have undead as a, as a viable concept. Just like it's difficult to have a necromancer as a viable concept. Um, but if you do it right. All right. Um, so why don't we talk about the character's appearance right now? Yes, I am, Tavalik. I am calling you creepy. So, um... But you don't need to ask me that. Ask ask Ollie that. So let's see. How does the character look? Let's go PHB for uh, dwarves. Because the last thing is defining features. But I mean it in a loving way, Tiff. Don't worry. Let's see. They stand well under five feet tall. So why don't we stand at like say four foot? I'm gonna stand at four foot nine. That's literally how tall my wife's mother is. Is four foot nine. Um, uh, yeah, but Carnathy skeletons are not uh, PC classes. So, um, hmm. I'm going to stand at four foot nine. Uh, I am going to have a. My beard is going to be. You kind of think like. Um, uh, very pubic looking beard. Something like those really scraggly, dead looking hair. Uh, kind of like really thinned out. Uh, like a really, really old person uh, that still happens to have a long beard that, that it's been through the shit and back again. Or like an old pirate beard, how it's just kind of like washed out of any form of life as opposed to like a beautifully maintained and healthy uh, beard like mine. Um, so that kind of like old, shitty, awful beard. Um, uh, is gonna be what's there. It's still gonna be very long. It's still gonna be very well kept. However, it's missing chunks of it. It's missing patches of it. Uh, literally, my uh, right cheekbone is exposed, and there's a good bit of rot that's right there. Uh, my left eye has no color to it whatsoever, and when I look around, it doesn't always move with me. Almost like you would imagine it's a glass eye, but it's not. It's just very dead. It still functions fine or whatever. My ears and everything are fine. My scalp or whatever is fine. It's probably just a little bit of rot in there. My hair is thinned out, but it's still relatively full head of hair because I died at a, uh, a younger age, not even middle-aged. Um, 
uh, broad-shouldered, uh, for a nose, a nice honking dwarven nose. A guy in real life have a good size nose. So a, a typical dwarven, like, he's got a schnoz on him. Like, her nose is probably too small to represent a good dwarf. But like a good dwarven schnoz. Um, no rot on it. Not bulbous either. Oh god. Not like a, like a big, like, like, light bulb looking nose. Just like a good size schnoz. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Um. I. I think it pretty much cover, uh, covers him. What he wears for clothes is wearing a traveler's outfit. The outfit's actually new. Even though he's like rod and old or whatever, his outfit is actually new. His cloak, I'm thinking very, very dark brown. Not quite black, just like a very, very dark brown cloak. Uh, it has like a nice big, um, uh, hood to it so he can throw it over his head and uh, not be seen. Um, he probably picked out the cloak specifically for that reason. Um, uh, other than that, I mean, his hands, I see one of his hands, uh, his off hands. So um, I'm left-handed, so most of my characters are. So his right hand is fairly rotted. So he often keeps a glove on that hand, if not both of them. But his right hand's fairly rotted, almost completely bone exposed and all of them bone and sinew and stuff like that. Almost no flesh whatsoever. There's other patches of his body that are missing flesh as well, but it's gonna be covered by clothing. So you don't really have to worry about it. Um, I almost feel as though, because he's left-handed, I almost feel as though maybe he only has a glove in his right hand. Maybe just his right hand to cover it up. But he still likes to, uh, he still likes touching things. It's good to feel alive. So it's that tactile sensation he enjoys. So, so his left hand's exposed. Just his fingernails are looking rotted out. I think that's enough detail to cover it. Oh, his eyes. Uh, like I said, one's a dead one and so it has no color to it. The other one, because he has dark, he's a dark haired dwarf. We'll see like a dark, like a deep, deep, deep red hair. Like, Across, like, if you're up close talking to him, you probably think it's brown. But when you see him, like, across, like, a field and the light's hitting it just right, it glows, like, red. It's like a deep auburn, almost brown hair. Um. Um. His other eye. I guess I'll go with brown. Brown eye for his other one. Okay. So I'm going to, uh. I think that, that that finishes how it is that this character is made. I think it finishes what they look like, all the ideals about them, uh, what their abilities are. I mean, a 20 AC walking in is really friggin' powerful, so I'm happy about that one. Um, initiative negative two is awesome. I like the hobble he has with his seven dexterity and his 25 speed. Uh, I love the effectively 18 health points. He's gonna be a fun character to play. I like it. It took a while, but I, I got it down. So, till next time, see you shortly.